Hello, my eight econ students. So, uh, we've got a short little section of the notes to cover today, but today's quiz is going to cover two videos. We got this one and then the one that follows, which is actually a YouTube video that you're going to watch that I'm going to comment on um, as it plays. And so, you're going to uh, be quizzed over this uh, and over the next part. So, here's where we're at in the notes. We have talked about uh, what makes our economy go either into recession or expansion? That was the first part of the notes. The second part of the notes that you quizzed over was uh, what we call fiscal and monetary policy, sometimes called the Keynesian approach, uh, because that was, again, proposed by a guy named John Maynard Keynes that said this is, this is what you do to steer the economy to fix it when it's off track. And so uh, the Keynesian approach says the government should take an active role. Fiscal policy, remember, is the government using taxing and spending to influence the economy. Monetary policy is the Federal Reserve or the Fed using, excuse me, changing the money supply, okay? So um, that's one thing you can do. There's another side to this coin though that is sometimes called the classical approach. If you wanna think of it as the conservative approach, okay? Because it's a, a uh, limited government uh, theory where, where you don't want the government getting involved, sometimes called laissez-faire. Laissez-faire literally meaning hands off, government hands off the economy. So that's another option, which is, okay, the economy is either in recession or expansion. Uh, the one theory is, what's the government going to do about this? How are they going to help it out? The other side of the coin is the classical approach, which is the government does nothing, and that's pretty much the definition of it, okay? You let the economy fix itself, primarily through the process of prices and wages adjusting. Okay, as prices and wages adjust in the economy, uh, unemployment is either going to rise or lower, depending on what's happening in the economy. Uh, prices are going to go up or down so that people can either buy more or buy less, or whatever the case may be. Uh, prices and wages naturally adjust, and that fixes the economy on its own. In other words, the economy kind of fixes itself. All right, so you do not involve the government. That's the classical approach. Now, real quick, the pros and cons. There's pretty much one of each. The pro, the, it, it is the best thing for the long-term future and well-being of the economy. This is kind of what we talked about earlier when we talked about the business cycle, and we talked a little bit about recession and expansion. Why do we go through uh, these ups and downs in the economy? And remember I said that just like when your body gets sick, if possible, let your body fight off the sickness. Your immune system becomes stronger, you develop antibodies to the virus or whatever else, and, and you're stronger going forward. Now, there are uh, these things called antibiotics, which is kind of an artificial boost to the immune system that helps out when you're sick. But again, remember, my, my perspective is, when possible, if you can let your body heal itself, let your immune system do what it is so good at doing, you will be healthier in the long run. If every time you get a little sniffle, you take an antibiotic, it's going to hurt your body's ability to learn and adjust and fight off disease and this and that, and, and not to mention viruses become immune uh, and, and bacteria becomes immune to um, uh, antibiotics. And so it, they just lose effectiveness, okay? It's kind of the same thing with the economy. When possible, if you can let the economy fix itself, it's better for the long term. Why? Because the economy learns from its mistakes, it gets stronger, it makes the appropriate adjustments, and whatever mistakes we made in the past, we're less likely to make in the future. If every time something goes a little bit off with the economy, the government steps in and tries to fix it, the economy doesn't necessarily learn from its mistakes, and we keep repeating the same mistakes over and over again. Okay? The big con, of course, is that it can take a long time. Okay? Just like what we're going through right now. Imagine a government telling the people, look, things stink right now and life is really gonna stink for two years or three years, just deal with it. That doesn't play very well to someone who's out of work right now, to someone who has a house payment to make right now, to someone who has to put food on the table right now. Good luck telling them in three years things will be better, okay? That's the big problem with this, is it, it can take a long time. And again, from my perspective, a lot of it depends on the severity of the situation, like the situation we're in right now with the coronavirus. It's a pretty big situation. We probably need that artificial boost that the government is offering us to help keep us afloat. If there's minor downturns here and there, I'd say, ah, oh, let, let things ride out, okay? It's gonna stink for a little while, but um, it's not gonna be dire, and eventually we'll get back on track. So. That's kind of the classical approach. The government essentially says, we're gonna let the economy be. We're gonna let it fix itself. It's good for the long-term 
Um, if you can stomach it in the short term, it's good for the long term. Now, the video that follows is uh, going to show this debate between the two sides, between the Keynesian side, the active government approach side, and the classical side, the laissez-faire side. So that's what you're going to watch next. And so uh, you can stop this video and pick up with the next one. And until next time.